you introduce us, Dan, like you do every other episode? I guess. I'm Dan. Phil. Mm hmm. No. And that is why I, 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 that is why I was reluctant to introduce us because we got Mr. Noball doesn't want to take part. Mr. Noball. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first name that came to my head. So uh, what's what's best in life, Dan? Oh, I don't remember. It's <laughs> about vanquishing women. And... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Close. So we... Something about vanquishing women and seeing men driven off in fear. <laughs> in fiat ponders. Uh, we were just discussing Tom Cruise. Uh, and Dan thinks he's weird. And he, he, he brought up the argument that when, when, when some water was sprayed at him at a... Uh, premiere. Uh, like a premiere, he reacted by grabbing someone and saying, you know, you're a jerk. And to be honest, I reckon a flash of rage probably went across his his mind as it would anyone and he genuinely had probably had to stop himself doing something seriously and I think he brought that back quite well yeah I, I, I agree, agree. I, no, I completely like, have you agree. seen the one where Will Smith slaps someone I love that video <laughs> yes. yeah. I mean, it's not it's not like a big hard slap he sort of goes oh you and everyone went mental there's, there's, there's I've never seen that no he, have you it's, it's not it's not he kind of no. open hand slaps yeah. someone someone yeah. kisses him he's like yeah, shaking out someone's hand they go it's a guy and they go in to kiss him, and he's like, whoa, and then kind of slaps him off. But that, but he also gives him a huge shove as yeah. well. He doesn't just... As you would, because they're, they're taking the piss. Yeah, absolutely. You're getting in the face of someone who, you know... There's, there's actors and people out there, if you did that, they'd batter you. Of all this, as a normal person would. Was... You might be in a better position to answer this, Stu, if you can remember this far back. Dennis Penis. Yes. Was Tom Cruise ever done by him? Um, I can't remember. Because remember. in the grand scheme of things... A little bit of water being shot from a fake microphone. <laughs> Let's move on. Whereas Dennis Penis just went fucking apeshit at people for prolonged periods of time. I remember. And no reaction was ever that it, big for <coughs> just him turning up and then insulting someone. Yeah, but you look at Dennis Penis and there's a guy in weird glasses with weird hair and a weird jacket. You know. You know something's going to happen from him, or just by looking at him. So you're prepared. You'd be semi-prepared for that. I think it was Demi Moore who was interviewed by him, and they mentioned someone, and it was someone who had died and was a friend. And he took the piss. And it was, <laughs> I can't remember the circumstances because I can't remember who it was. But it could be like Michael Hutchins or something. He busts like a, a joke out about him being dead, and it was just like face of thunder. I remember. Probably a little too far. I remember he chased up. Um, uh, Steve Martin. And he says, Steve, Steve, Steve! And, and Steve looks in to talk to him and sees there's a camera and he gets ready to do an interview and he goes, Why aren't you funny anymore? And then, <laughs> and then Steve, and to be honest, you know, that's, it's kind of, it's, it's Dennis Penis, you know, but I, I've read an interview with the guy who plays Dennis Penis years later. Paul Kay. Yeah. Paul Kay, he, he really regrets saying that. He says, who, Who's I to say, Why aren't you funny anymore? Steve Martin. And Steve Martin's a fucking comedy legend. And, uh, yeah, Steve Martin did not look happy at that, no. did he? And, but the thing is, he just walked away from that. Yeah, he just walked away. You know, But I'm sure he's a comedian, he's done stand-up comedian, I'm sure he's sure. so used to that shit. At the um, same time, though, he did stand-up, he should be prepared for uh, heckles. You know, he should have some kind of one-liner, you know. And he yeah, does. but Steve Martin was doing, like, arenas and shit. Yeah. Not like a club. He used to, he, I'm yeah, sure he's done clubs. Yeah, yeah, he, I'm sure he knows what, how to handle heckles. One does not simply start on an arena. Bullshit. Unless you, uh, unless you, Ricky Gervais. Go ahead. Ricky Gervais. Okay, look at Ricky Gervais's first DVD. It's not an arena. It's like a little theatre. No, I, he he went straight into doing arenas. Yeah, but he did a bunch of theatres. I saw him at the Apollo. He okay. went digging yeah. in ha- pubs and shit, were he? Yeah, he he didn't do it the traditional way. Yeah, but like uh, Daryl Breen, uh, have you read his book Tickling the English? No. It's a good read. It's about one of his tours. And that was an arena tour, as have all of Daryl Breen's tours been. You get the big arena, full works, that gets released on the DVD, and, you know, everyone's none the wiser. However, in the build-up to that, they do all the private little gigs in the back rooms of pubs and everything. We don't know Ricky Gervais didn't do that. Well, he did, I know he did for the other ones, because that's how he, he worked out his material. Yeah, that's but, how but there was, get the jokes. There was already... It, it didn't matter how funny Ricky Gervais was going to be. He could have stepped into doing a an arena tour and people would have paid to see him regardless of how good the jokes would have been. He just he respected the craft enough to go around like the little areas work out the kinks in his act. But he it's it's not like he was some small comedian who 
slowly worked his way up into like you know in the arena. It's not like Lee Evans who you know has done it all his life. He, I mean, I don't want to come across as disrespectful to Ricky Gervais because I do think he's a is one of the few celebrities that I have a lot of respect for. But as a comedian, as in like a stand-up comedian, he pretty much sort of walked onto that job as opposed to started off as a comedian, a stand-up comedian, and then built his way up. I he became know. famous and then moved, he became it. I remember him before he was famous, though. I remember him before he was On the 11 o'clock show. Yeah, I remember him before that. He's on Spaced shit, as well. Was he? Yeah, it's on the very first episode of Spaced. I don't remember that. Who was he in that? He is no, no, not the very first episode. He is, I think, he's in the second series when um, Marsha discovers that they're not, they're not boyfriend and girlfriend, and and we said, well, we, we this is what this is what we had to do. We had we had we had to pretend we're boyfriend and girlfriend, otherwise you wouldn't give us the flat. He goes, no, you wouldn't. He says, yeah, it said it on the advert. He goes, no, it didn't. He says, yes, it did. And then she has like this recollection of when she's uh, on the phone to the agent listing the flat. And it's Ricky Gervais. Yeah. So I mean, obviously he was a pop star as well before that, wasn't he? Uh, yes. I never thought that um, from his material on the eleven o'clock show that that man would ever get famous. I just didn't think it'd happen. It was shocking for the sake of being shocking, and yeah. I didn't find it, felt, it funny. Yeah. But to this day, that's still Ricky Gervais. I accept it. Yeah, I accept it. But he put a, pretty much said a lot of the stuff. But I can imagine. know you know who Ricky Gervais is, and that's. His persona. That's how he got his name out. Because Back when you hadn't seen him before, it was just some <clears throat> almost middle-aged, portly chap like taking the piss out of wheelchair people. Well, the thing, <laughs> right, the thing is, I, as a rule, I generally like Ricky Gervais, uh, but he does. So you used to watch the Eleven O'clock Show. I've seen. I've only seen clips of it before my Shit. time. Um, I really loved it. I fucking hated it, right. it purely it's because very Ian Lee's a cunt. I absolutely Ian Lee. fucking hate He was better than Richard Blackwood. The, right. the launch of Allergy as well. Ian, Ian Lee, I know that name. It's important. Who's Ian Lee? He Happy was the host of the uh, clock show. He was it's everywhere for a while. launched two people's careers, arguably. I can argue that, and I will. He can, and he did, uh, and you were right. <laughs> Allergy, not exactly long lasting. No, he, no, he, he but did fucking, a Yeah, Borat and everything like that. He did that. a movie. It's a man's career. Uh-huh. Multiple films. It's a multiple movie. He's a huge Where star he is now. The, he is the main person. In That's fact, uh, his characters are very flash of the pattern of the time. Sasha Baron Cohen, though, is uh, is strongly rumored to be playing Freddie Mercury in yeah. a in a mm. film about him. I mean, I I myself see that. I can see <coughs> that. Yeah, yeah. And I liked his little performance in uh, Sweeney Todd. He's in loads of things. He's I'll in Hugo. He's in a Scorsese film. Will you not watch that because it's a musical? Um, that and it looks shit. I, you know, I genuinely liked most of it. My problem with it was... Is it I, a Tim Burton film? It yeah. is Tim Burton. You know it can be Tim Burton. It's got Helena Bonham Carter <laughs> and Johnny yeah. Depp. Um, I liked Sweeney Todd. Uh, some of the songs in it are really good. My problem with it, ironically, is that there's too much singing in it. You know, at least some... Most musicals at least give you a bit of breathing space every now and again. Uh, whereas... Sweeney Todd for a lot of it it's just relentless 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 singing so this is the difference but there's only two musicals I think I like and that's Blues Brothers doesn't South, South Park. I was going to say you, South Park but the difference is that um, Blues Brothers has shitloads of music in it but none of them are music to do with what they're doing what about Disney like films? I imagine I'm not going to include Disney films they include singing you could argue they're musicals I don't think they are you could argue that they are though well, I don't. I don't. I don't think of American Pie play. is a musical then, because that's got lots of music in it. No, that. Clerks Two's that... got a musical number in it. Is that a musical? You know what I mean. The point is, in a lot of musicals, you'll find <coughs> the characters singing about what they're doing. So if they're brushing the floor, they go, "Oh, there's a song about brushing the floor, something or other." Blah blah blah. But um, oh, give that a rest. Blues Brothers is just songs that they happen to be singing for some reason because they'll be in a club mm, or whatever, for the most part. We go to a diner. Aretha Franklin's here. I wonder what will happen next. I'll burst into a most famous song. So South Park, South Park and Blues Brothers, what, what happened to Team America? Team America, I didn't like as much, but I, I, I forgot about it. Team America so is, is a great film. It's not a great film. What? It's not a great film. It's brilliant. It's not. You it's good. Me. It's not brilliant. You meant It's me. nowhere near as good as South Park the movie. I disagree. I, I'm also, I think South Park the movie is just a bit too old now. It's a bit too old. I disagree. I think Team America's a bit too not funny. 
What? Yeah, that's going too far. I said a bit too not funny. It's but very it's funny. Like it. I didn't. I, I, I bet there's not five funny. minutes you could watch that and you don't. There's not some funny on there. Yeah, I'd offer to watch it with me, but I don't want to watch this? it again. Has Dan not seen this film? Team America. Yeah. I watched it at a girlfriend's house and uh, I spent the entire time either on my iPod or on my phone or whatever and she turned it off halfway through because I thought it was rubbish. So Matt, no one laughs at Matt Damon. Right, I did laugh. Or la- Fag. I did laugh at Matt Damon. I did laugh at Matt Damon. Phil Matt is killed. Fag is just so simple yet brilliant. I did laugh at the Matt Damon thing, yes. Or <laughs> well, how they do the, the James Bond makeup for him. And he's just got random bits of hair <laughs> yeah. stuck to him. Can't remember. If you want to commit suicide, <laughs> you might want to use this. A oh, the bit where he's vomiting. <laughs> That's amazing. You just gave up a life, didn't you? The thing is, keep, <laughs> keep in mind, Team America always has the look and feel of Thunderbirds and all that lot, and as we revealed in the last podcast, you ain't into that, so... I think he's just afraid of puppets. So you don't like musicals, you don't like puppets... <laughs> I don't think these are bad things to not like. <laughs> I'm not a fan of musicals. If it, if it I know f- you're not, but you've not seen Blues Brothers, which is a you've nice thing. Blues Brothers. not. Because no, he, he won't watch musicals. And I've said oh, it's not really a musical. It's one of the finest films ever, Blues Brothers. Okay. I think it's got one of the best car chases. Well, it, well there's a few car chases <coughs> in it, and they're all good. They're all completely daft and over the top car chases. So it's not like an earnest car chase. It's like. So this police department's now got 5,000 police vehicles which are all going to crash into each other. Right, Stu, do you like any, you know, classic... No. Uh, they don't, they don't, classic don't, what? Musicals. You don't even know what I was going to say, OK? And they don't... Uh, you know, I scratched the word classic because they don't have to be classic. Do you like, and you must do, you must do, you're a human being, and inside, with a heart, do you like any Disney films? I like some of the Pixar ones. Okay, what about the... Well, I wouldn't class them as musicals. The he didn't pic- say the musicals, he said also, Pixar film. he said uh, films. Also, the Pixar, one, the Pixar ones aren't musicals because you didn't ever see any characters singing in the Pixar ones. Good. Great. However, uh, I'm on about... As it should be. <laughs> what about proper Disney film? Just Disney on its own? Not watched any since I was a kid. Lion King. Right, did you like... I didn't like Lion King when I was little. No. You didn't like the Lion King no. when you were... Why? No, no. As a little child, how could you not like the Lion King? I wasn't that little a child. Probably already have facial. You, you wouldn't can't have been nine. So. You... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. man, we are northern, so it is a complete possibility. From Everton, you've seen Everton. <coughs> <laughs> you mean you've got eyebrows on your cheek? <laughs> Bodline Irish. <laughs> no, I, I've never been a big. See, this is a thing. I've, I was ruined at an earlier time by watching things like um, Commando and stuff. No. I'm not going to enjoy Lion yeah, King wait. once I've seen Commando. The, uh, how do you explain Lion King Short Circuit? I was that I was young. I was young enough to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Short Circuit 2, I <laughs> threw myself off the cage in tears when he was beat up just like a bull. Pulling himself. Yeah, apparently. I don't remember it. That's how I must have been like four or something. Wait, that is wait. a brutal scene. No, the thing about, I didn't like that scene. Right, we're laughing, we're laughing, but that is a horrible, horrible scene in that film, and uh, and I think I, rec- I don't really remember, I recall I must have been upset about it as well, I don't recall being, in your own words, inconsolable, but uh, but the point is, how can you <laughs> say that you watched that, and at the same time couldn't enjoy a Disney film because of films like Commando? Well, that had a robot in it, for one. <laughs> <laughs> that had a laser cannon on its shoulder. The Lion yeah, King had true. the king of the jungle, man. I don't give a shit. I, I, don't I the think the coming in me is... See, because I was very young when <laughs> I started is. watching... <laughs> oh, dear. I was very young when I watched, like, Terminator and Robocop and everything, but I think at least what the old-school Disney films had were there the were awesome films with good stories and good characters. The later ones were pap, but... Disagree. What, so like Aladdin 3? That's a classic, no, like, that is. Yeah, but the hang about uh, Bolt, Tangled. They're, they're Tangled is, is a sort of a renaissance, and a lot of people would say it's a renaissance one because it's going back to the. And besides, that's CGI. It's still, a, it's still just Disney on its own. It's a modern day Disney film. Yeah, but I mean, there's, been, there's, been, there's been very few Disney hits to the, to the levels of Lion King, and I mean, I'd, I'd probably say 
And also has Tangled spawned a, um, a like a, a Broadway musical and and like a, Tangled was was successful and it was a good film, but um, it's definitely not the Lion King. I think it's also different. When we were kids, there was only a few TV channels. You had to have the VHS uh, at the time, or you wouldn't get to see these things. Unlike more so now, when you've got most services have some kind of Sky or at least Freeview, which is like. 40 or 50 channels or whatever. Ten times so there's more a lot more chance that that kind of film would pop up. Um, <clears throat> we didn't have that much money to spunk on VHS tapes. Most of the films I watched were taped off TV and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. so it, re- it required my dad to have recorded it, and that was usually action films. All right, Nick, you. Or war films. You make it sound like obviously you enjoy a few classic Disney films. Yeah, definitely. Well. But you don't like musicals. How do you feel when you watch a Disney film and a character suddenly breaks out into song? I can live with it. Um, I've never ever li- listed any Disney film in my top ten films. I'd say Disney films um, are a genre unto themselves. Totally. Um, That's why they get their own browser to it. Exactly, you? exactly. And you know, they're, they're, I'd even classify like the, the Disney Pixar films to be, you know, almost separate to classic Disney. Absolutely. That's because, why. The thing know. is, if you were to talk about a Disney Pixar film, you would title it as we just have been. You'd call it a Disney Pixar film. You yeah. wouldn't say have you seen the latest Disney film. I'd say it's Disney more Pixar. Pixar. I'd say it's a Pixar film as opposed to Disney mm. film because obviously Disney just bought them. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah. But before Disney bought them, it was always still Disney Pixar. It was Disney working with Pixar, wasn't it? So. Not originally. No. Yeah, but the guy, the guy who left Disney, founded Pixar. I think yeah, his name was John uh, Lasseter. So sorry. Are you on about John Lasseter, who worked for... No. Di- then what do you, what are you on about? No, it's someone else. I'll find out who he is. Uh, he was basically one of the big executives at uh, Disney. Uh, kind of that, fallen out <coughs> with... Um, I've totally forgotten his name as well. The first Toy Story, which is the first Disney Pixar film, is a Disney is Disney Pixar, so... I'm, I might be thinking of DreamWorks. Which is uh, basically the guy... What was the name of the guy who uh, used to run Disney? He's like a big American business guy. Roy Disney. Him. No, it was a totally what? separate, um, separate guy. Um, let me find out. I'll find, I'll find the names. The other Roy Disney. No, you, you, you talk amongst yourselves while I'm blind. Techie, you love Disney, Dan. I'm a uh, big supporter of Disney. In fact, I think, going back to it, just to show how little Disney I watched when I was young, I think I only had one Disney VHS, and that was Pinocchio. That's old. The only <laughs> Disney film that stands out to me is Aladdin. I love Aladdin. Purely as well. Can't remember anything else apart from Robin Williams. And that's what made it, and that's what sticks in my mind. Once, Nothing else about the film. Once at junior school, <coughs> we had like everyone in the hall watching the TV, and it was Fantasia, and it was shit, and that's coloured. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? Experience of old Disney as well. Yeah, but when you're a little kid, yeah, Fantasia's definitely not aimed at you, is it? I mean, I mean, it probably, probably actually was ironically aimed at kids, but kids didn't get it. Kids don't want to watch watch basically an opera. In Disney farm, kids, you know. So I loved all like the Mickey Mouse specials and stuff. Um, Oliver and Company, that was one of my favourites. Never seen. Um, the Rescuers, oh god, I love the Rescuers. I saw both them in the cinema. Um, Aladdin, Hercules. Hercules, yeah. Yeah, There's just so many. I love the Rescuers. That was one of my favourites. These are all modernish Disney, though. No, These are all no, like one. late eighties, early nineties. Yeah, not like classic fight. Disney, like Bambi or something. Like that. Well, no, yeah, but to me, yeah, uh, to me, I would, I would call it. They were releasing at the time, weren't they? Fox and the Hound. I saw that when that first came out. Uh, Jungle Book. Although I was never master. Jungle Book was Book. awesome. Jungle Book was Walt Disney's last film. It was Jeffrey Katzenberg, by the way, who was hired by Michael Eisner, who run Disney in the nineties and I think the eighties, and they had a massive falling out, and then um, Katzenberg left. And found in DreamWorks. So okay. It wasn't Pixar, sorry. Right, well, it's a, it's a fascinating story, but yeah, so as you can see, it has nothing to do with the Pixar thing. Mm. I was looking at the films that he was responsible for Who Framed Roger Rabbit, The Rescuers, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Black Cauldron. Um, what was the one with Merlin? Oh, what was that one with um, Young King Arthur? Something in the Stone, is it? Sword in the Stone? Oh, I loved Sword in the Stone. Oh, that was, yeah. That was a classic one. I always felt sorry for the female squirrel. Yeah, I did as well. I did as well. That was really sad. I have no fucking clue what's <laughs> been said. Neither have I. 
No, I, I know what you mean, Dad. Yeah, I, I just felt sorry for the female squirrel in that. Yeah. Heartbreaking. <laughs> Are you going to enlighten us why it's so heartbreaking? Or you should just... watch the film. Yeah, just uh, watch the film. No, I'll, I'll see, see it then. I, I, I feel like yeah, me, actually, me and Dan are like the open-minded pair of this. In terms of music and film, definitely. You know, no, no, definitely. Do you know music what annoys wrong. me? Do you know what annoys me? When people just say, without any just cause, people just say, no, 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 no watch it. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, I'm not going to watch well, that film. Is it? Yeah. You've barely watched anything. And yeah, I'm but not, he's never said I'm never going to watch anything, is he? I'm, pure, I'm not going to watch a film purely to find out what happens to one character. You could have just told me. It really annoys me, not aiming it at you two, <laughs> but when, pe- when I want to learn something from someone, who, like if we're in the middle of an argument or a discussion and I don't know what something is, and I say, what's that, can you just explain it to me? No, find it yourself. <laughs> like, fuck you then, no. Your sorry, argument's now in Sorry, involved. Phil, I, that was unfairly levelled at you. <laughs> Stu... When he goes, no, like I'm, I'm, I'm not. He's not going to do it. Not he's not going to watch it. it. Not gonna and that's it. just close-minded. You'll not watch Blues Brothers, though, either. Apparently. I watch Blues Brothers. I've never said I wouldn't. Well, you bloody change the tune. You won't watch any. I've asked you a few times. I said, yeah, but I've got to be in the mood for it. Got What's that mood? mood? I've got to get you drunk. No, no, well, no I agree. There are certain films you just think I'm not in the mood for. Yeah. It. I, I, the way I Jim approach. Yes. <laughs> 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 the way I approach a film is, if I've never seen it before, I like to give every film the respect it's due and I'll watch it with clear eyes, with a clear mind. I don't want to watch it pissed, I don't want to watch it in the background while I'm doing something else, I want to watch it properly. And these days I don't have enough time or I don't have enough energy to do that for every fucking film. But whenever I watch a film, I'll watch it, I'll properly watch it. I won't just fuck it off. I'll watch it to the end, even if it's shit. I mean, I fucking watched The Punisher the other day, and that was fucking awful. See, I won't do, I won't do that. If I'm really not enjoying a film, I won't force myself to finish it. I stuck with Robot Jocks. Robot Jocks is a classic, which is now being remade. Classic. Which is now being remade by Guillermo del Toro, plus Godzilla into Pacific Rim, plus Stringer Bell, plus Stringer Bell, <laughs> and Glados, and Glados, Glados. GLaDOS is going to be in this film, Robot Jocks vs. Godzilla, featuring Stringer Bell. So what's, what's Robot Jocks? I've never even heard of it. Robot Jocks is... No one's heard of this. Oh, no. Yeah, they <laughs> have. No, me. They have. It's a cla- well, obviously, because it's on Netflix. It's oh, a right. film It's a film where... Um, imagine in, in like the, the, the dark future, Dan, where war has been forbidden. Basically, all disputes are, are settled by having two big robots controlled by men fight. Doesn't sound like too dark a future to me. It is a pretty dark future. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea to me, yeah. Everyone's in the stands going cheering on like either the Soviets or the Americans and then one falls over into the stand and everyone's dead. Yeah. But that was it's happy. It was dreadful. <laughs> you were saying it's on Netflix, but you no know one else is on Netflix. Slugs Slugs A film I'm confident no one's ever seen. We're back then. Uh, we are gonna I'm gonna watch Slugs. Mm. Never heard. <laughs> but I don't think many people have. It's one that we didn't even sell at HMD. Which is why it's on Netflix. It's the island of lost films. On uh, on Love Film, you know, like the <coughs> the shameless films, the um, the ones that in in you know they'd been like yellow boxes, oh, yeah. like horror films like Torso or Strip oh, Nude yeah. for Your Killer or you know <laughs> Venus in Furs and shit. What was the Rat one? Ratman. Ratman. Yeah. That's just basically Ratman was a film where they had a midget. Painted him brown and like put him on like the uh, <laughs> the soap shelf of a shower and there's a woman there going <laughs> the tagline the critter from the shitter the critter from the shitter oh dear no. <laughs> giving him some false teeth to make his front teeth look massive <laughs> massive yeah people I used to go out with a girl who used to fucking love those films I was like I I, I don't understand why people would watch shit yeah, horror yeah. films like that I just don't get it. Yeah, I never understood the people who came in HMV and uh, and just always bought horror films. It didn't matter what the horror film was, as long as it was a new horror film, they'd buy it. And Blue Ray Horror Man, for example. Like Blue Horror Man, yeah. I think, it, was he after my time though? I don't really remember. No, no, you, it, Blue Ray Horror Man was always there from when I was been there. Like the blonde guy with the glasses. I don't know if I, we well, he, he does sometimes wear glasses, but unusually, usually not. He'd have like a black leather jacket on. Just trying to dress younger than he is. Trying to dress younger than he is, yeah. Know, yeah. Um... Who was the guy who... You must remember this guy, Stu. There was a guy who 
began off as a normal looking guy and then slowly but surely over time turned into a very camp looking gothic man. Do you remember? It was you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really remember if I'm honest. Probably will. Immediately I'll recognise everyone who used to serve. Sure. But from the description I don't really remember. There was, there was, sorry Dan, go on. That was awkward if you were walking, you know, you wouldn't even be working that day, you'd be walking through town centre and then you'd make eye contact with a with a known customer at HMV and you'd have to... I still do occasionally, because it's still, <laughs> still fresh in my memory, like, like, um... Well, I, you know what, to Coolidge. this day, to this day, if I still go through Bolton Town Centre, there's still probably the so, odd one every now and again. I, I know him, yeah. The Coolidge, I've seen Coolidge floating around as well. Obviously, we're going to save the Coolidge story for when, to, uh, we, when we do the HMV special. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't wait to hear Martin's <coughs> Coolidge stories. Because obviously, well, Coolidge is future Martin. Isn't yeah, it? basically, we have a friend called Martin and... At some point in the future, Martin comes back in time to this this period to warn warn Martin to, to basically to not do something so he doesn't become future Martin. <laughs> Sounds brilliant. It's like a film, but real. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Because <laughs> um, to this day, if one, if either of you three see him on uh, on the street, mm-hmm. there's, all, there's always inevitably then a Facebook status. Cool, exciting. Yeah. I saw him before Christmas, and he was looking haggard and shaggy-haired, and I think he was talking, you know, like the hot dog stands in, in town centre, mm. he's pestering one of the girls in one of them, it's like, oh, poor girl. <laughs> Gentleman's relish. <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was going to say in regards to, um... yeah, do you remember, do you remember in HV again, getting back on HV, the, sh- the shameless films, like, you know, a lot of the per- people who buy them is because on, on the actual DVD box, it would actually feature quite a lot of, you know, nudity. So a lot of, like, older, like, pe- blatantly older guys who, who, don't, have who, who don't have the internet buying them. And you think, they're 18 quid a DVD, you think, you're only buying this for one reason, <laughs> you sick bastard. Yeah. There was one very reasonable Plus chap. sell porn. Yeah. Yeah, was it some, Dario Argento? Does he Dario do, Argento, like, yeah, he's a very Erotic horror one. films? Yeah. Yeah, he was collecting all them. And he was just like a... To look at him, a normal upstanding citizen, but like absolute fucking weird choice of films to be obsessed with. Yeah, I can sort of get that because I'm sure he's made some like decent films. Um, mm. There's a few other directors like who are like that who make uh, weird films. What's the name of the guy who made? Um, I'm losing all my powers tonight. That film with uh, where Chris Reed went to see it. In like at the cinema, and it it basically features um, oh, it's Antichrist. Antichrist, that's it. Oh, yeah. And that's basically like that's got hardcore sex in it. Like he's he's made a lot of shitty films like that that are just garbage. Um, but you know you could see that as a pawn. But a lot of people would buy his films because of who he is. I don't think I've seen Antichrist yet. I've no that. particular desire to do so. No. Chris Reed described it in detail, and it was like I don't want to see that. I know what the big moment is. Oh, one of them. Or she smashes his dick with a hammer. Oh, not that bit. <laughs> but now you know. <laughs> now you know. Lars von Trier, that's it. He's, he made a film called The... Um, I believe it's The Idiots. And it's basically... Uh, I may have watched it, I don't know. The Idiots is... Um, I'm sure he made The Idiots. Let me just confirm. That That's a film that's quite, kind of funny. Uh, where it's... Um, basically a film about a, a bunch of guys subverting like normality by pretending to be... Uh, pretending to be like uh, mongs. <laughs> what my favourite words? Oh, sorry. Why did you look at me when you said it? Because <laughs> I know I know you you uh, you're offended. I want to check it. I'm not offended. He detests mongs. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely idiot. It's 1998. In uh, in film studies, he was like one of these guys who did this thing called um, it was called the Dogma '95. It was like a like a, a style of making film where you weren't allowed to use any special effects, you weren't allowed to rehearse, you weren't allowed to use any kind of equipment, so no lighting, no sound gear, you, all you had was the camera, so you could, it had to be natural lighting, you couldn't have a tripod, um, it was like pure naturalistic, like you couldn't have any props, any uh, costume, it all had to be real, um, and he was one of the pioneers of that. And then obviously people realised, this is shit, and went on. I was going to say, it sounds really incredibly bad, and it's like some bloke who wants to make a film, has absolutely zero money, so 
is some it? some good Dogma ninety five films were made. Like there's one I've actually got upstairs called Festen, <coughs> which is about this um, weird sort of German family reunion and like all kinds of like family truths comes out. It's really funny. It's really dark and. The sort of style of filmmaking I kind of benefits it, but the majority of the time, it's a bit. Silly. I kind of agree with it because, like, when you watch a film like um, King Kong, like we were discussing earlier, or like The Hulk or something like that, where where they use CGI, and and in some films you have to use CGI, but like Star Wars Episode One, it's all CGI, mm. and you can tell it's CGI, and it's just it suffers for it. I feel. You know, I'd, I'd rather have f- physical effects than, than CGI effects. I like how you said episode one, though, whereas episode two and episode three are pretty much entirely blue screen. Uh. Yeah, you're right. Well, again, yeah, but, I mean, they're all fucking shit, those prequels, to be honest. Yeah. I enjoyed, I enjoyed um, episode three because of the, the badass lightsaber fight, um, but that doesn't make up for the rest of the film. I think I enjoyed all three first time. But in, as much as I enjoyed them, that doesn't mean that the classics are great, like the yeah. first three are. I, I have so not, I enjoyed them. They weren't terrible. They're terrible compared to them. I have no shame in saying I, I like the prequels, and if they weren't part of the same universe, if they weren't tied in with episodes four to six, they'd be their own good standalone films. Um, and I mm. must have been 12, I guess, when The Phantom Menace came out, and I was 12 years old. Jar Jar Binks didn't annoy me. I thought Jar Jar was cool. You were 12. I yeah. always re- revealed that he was... I always knew he was fucking horrible and annoying. Yeah, but you'd have I been... Was, I was rooting for him to die. You'd have been, what, 17 now? Something like that. Something like that. So going back, what's your favourite Disney film then, Dan? Uh, I'm with... Phil, I think. It was Phil who said Aladdin. I think it has to be Aladdin. Um, just because... It's including Pixar. Well, now Disney Pixar really are a world of their own because if we're going to put Disney Pixar in there, uh, that it's is hard to that because they're all, with exception to the one I haven't seen, and to be honest, I have no interest in seeing Cars too. Uh, they're I've all not seen Cars. They're I've all seen excellent. Cars. Seems more of a, like a kiddie film to me. You know, I watched it the is, fir- it's all right. I watched the first Cars, and yeah, it's all right. It's not great. It re- the Cars really is more for the, the kids. Uh, but it is all right. It's got one of the last performances by... Um... Damn, name's gone. The guy... Uh, Sane Owen Wilson. Before he uh, <laughs> did a load of drugs with uh, Steve Coogan and then went mental. <laughs> no, that's not that's what going... happens to you when you try and hang with Steve Coogan. No, I'm going it for... fucks your world up. I'm... Going for a classic, a, a classic like actor. actor. Uh, what on earth was he called? I really like The Incredibles. I've never fully watched that. You I know what? Never the seen the Incredibles is one of my least favorite Disney pictures. Really? I, yeah. I really. I, th- I would have thought you'd have seen The Incredibles. Paul it's Newman. All about, like Paul Newman. Paul Newman was the actor in Cars, one of his last performances, and he was a great actor. Incredibles about superheroes. Uh, yeah, isn't it right? I know about. Just never got around to it because, for most of my adult life, I've been single. And the kind of films that I'd watch. With someone, I think I watched nearly all of them on my own. Probably me only way. Crying, drinking John Smiths. <laughs> Incredibles is good. <clears throat> I like Incredibles. Um, just happens to be one of my least favourites. It's cause it's one of the ones I don't laugh out loud particularly much in it. Um, I, uh, which I know you could argue about. Like you don't laugh in Wally either, but Wally's got heart. Um, Incredibles had heart, I thought. Wall- I yeah, but Wally's got brutal stabbing your heart heart. Wally, Wally is a brilliant film. Wally died at the end. Don't go giving potential spoilers. I think I already know. You know you, well, you don't. I know you know, bits. Um, it's a terrific film. Terrific film, I completely, yeah, Wally's and I completely film. disagree with you as well. Sure and, uh, so, in answer to the question, I'm putting you on the spot or no? Well, I'm with Nick, and that Disney Pixar should be include uh, should be counted as their own films and not Disney films. So, is your question Disney or Disney Pixar? Do I have to specify? Yeah. All right. Then. What's your best Disney film? I guess it has to be Aladdin. I love What's Aladdin. Your best Pixar film. Oh man, uh, I, maybe Finding Nemo. Cause everyone loves Finding Nemo. No film. No. You're gonna upset me now. So, well, you have upset. <laughs> It's about a disabled fish. Yes. Yeah. It's a wonderful film. Can I just say, I, I got to find a Nemo bath toy for, uh, in my stocking, by the way, for Christmas. Stop 
<laughs> just yeah. That's the voice yeah, of it's Dan Single Winwood. Did nothing for me. Yeah, thank you for that. It's not. You don't find it sad at all that his his wife and his, his it entire was family die at the beginning. Brutality for my emotions <laughs> that film. I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting a kids' film under the sea. I think this was the first <coughs> Pixar film I'd ever seen as well. Oh no, sorry, I'd seen Toy Story. And then this is the second one, and I just was not ready for the assault. So you're not at that. Toy Story 3 was emotional brutality to yeah, me. Yeah, Toy Story 3. I pretty good. much cried in the right. cinema. You, can I, can I just say, right. at the end where they're going. I don't know how it ends, mate, so no, don't tell me. Wait, can I, just, can I just say there is absolutely no shame whatsoever in crying in a film? Okay, if you're crying in a film, you obviously something in that film really got to you. And totally, Toy Story 3 is a weeper. Toy Story mm-hmm. 3 is an emotional film. Um. Are you, are you implying that you may have shed a tear? In I was all over the show with that. Really? Well, I won't. I won't. The same with Wally. There's bits in that where it was I, like, you know what, oh yeah. God, why? But, Pause, have a minute. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, Restart. I watched Bolt uh, only for the first time a few days ago. Has anyone seen Bolt? No. no. I implore you to watch it. And I, is that the one where is the dog, a TV star, who thinks is really a superhero? Yeah, that's exactly it. Dog is a TV star, he thinks he has all these superpowers in real life. It's not until he's lost and on the road he realises he doesn't. And it's a great story, I implore you to watch it. And Nick, as a dog lover, you got to watch it. There's one bit at the end that will stab you right in the heart. <laughs> I've Excuse seen me. bits of it, I've not seen it in one go. But it's alright. See, I, I love Toy Story, that's probably my favourite Pixar film. My favourite Disney, Robin Hood. Love Robin Hood. Uh, I was not expecting that. I liked Robin Hood. Don't know how to react. I liked Robin Hood, but I've not seen it since I was genuinely a little child. It was because that's definitely an old school one, Robin Hood. Yeah, it is an old school one. It's made on the cheap. The sort of spliced um, Jungle Book and one of the other ones together. It has a look of the Jungle Book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they did. They did. They just they traced over like a lot of the, um, the sort of the dancing and the singing and a lot of the characters. That's why um, Little John looks like Baloo from um, Jungle Book. Hmm. Because they just traced over him. And, um, a lot of the movements exactly the same. And why is that your favourite, isn't it? Because uh, as a kid, I loved Robin Hood. Sure. Um, I loved. I don't know. I just like foxes. I, I, foxes is one of my favourite animals. So Fox and the Hound was one of the first. It was the first Disney film I ever saw with my mum, and that'd be my number two because um, that had dogs and foxes in it who were mates. <laughs> who initially like grew up like 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 have, have, have you seen it before? <laughs> Have you seen Fox Probably, before? Probably. Well, Basically, um, they they start off as obviously like puppies. So like they they knock they're, they're on this farm. They're knocking about together, and then the um, the dog gets taken off um, somewhere else, and then cuts like five, obviously in in, in their ter- times like five years later when they're adults, and they're brought back together. And obviously they're fucking enemies, aren't they? And it's all about them sort of rekindling. And yeah, right. it's, it's kind of brutal. Like yeah. the original Disney films were brutal. They were um, Bambi, yeah. fucking Bambi, yeah. Snow White, kind of dark as well. I remember yeah. seeing Snow White the first time it was restored at the cinema when I was super young. Snow White, Snow White is dark. My mum saw that at the cinema when it was a re-release because it's that old. Mm. It's obviously it was, she saw it when it was a re-release at the cinema. And uh, and this was back in the days as well where films came on. The moment the film went off, it came straight back on again. So my mum already had the end of Snow White ruined for her before she saw the beginning <laughs> of the film. But uh, the bit where she transformed into the hideous old crone, back then, back in the day, that was a terrifying thing, apparently. You know, it's like, you know, yeah. yeah they were, Disney is dark. It it's, was. Well, even, like, Tangled. No, it's dark. darkness in it. There's a guy who gets stabbed in that. Yeah, no, that is. This is that's why I love Disney Pixar as well. Disney Pixar get braver with every film. You got Wally set in a post-apocalyptic future when most of the human race has been wiped out. You know, you got The Incredibles. That's probably like the first Disney Pixar where people die in it. You know, they they do. They get braver with every film. You well, know? I've heard I've heard that. You know, the latest one, Brave. See, I didn't. You know what? I said I've not seen Cars two. Forgot about Brave. I've heard I a lot of people Brave. say that Brave is Pixar playing it super safe. See, Brave, it's going to be good, but it's going to be safe. Brave is apparently like cars. Brave is apparently really more for the kids. Mm. See, some of like the DreamWorks ones are, are comparable. So obviously, I, like, I enjoyed the first Shrek. The first, take, first Shrek is the second awesome. one, and then the, the rest I've just not bothered. No, with. the second's good. I like the second. Um, not no, not a patch on the first one, obviously. Which one was the one that was on over Christmas? Uh, that, was the, that was that was the, no, that was the fourth one. Yeah, Shrek. yeah. So 
Yeah, it's, it's, no, I'll stop after the second one. Once you've got past the second one, there's no need to go on. Three, three of my favourite, like, animated films aren't... I, I think, I'm sure DreamWorks, so there's How to Train Your Dragon. Which I've taped, I still haven't which seen. Which is absolutely amazing. Um, that, that's easily up, up at the top. Um, Despicable Me. Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. And um, and again, that's got heart. And Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Which, I like that. Which is really, really good. Yeah, are right. you saying that these are better than Disney? Or I'd say they're, 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 the they're easily comparable. Yeah. They're easily... Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is a, a great film. film. Um, does that go for you then, Stu? Is that your <clears> favourite <throat> Disney Pixar, Finding Nemo? Finding Nemo, definitely. I've only ever watched it once. <laughs> wow! <laughs> With reverence. <laughs> wow! But you know what? Um, no, I'm not in a rush to watch it. No, you know what? No, totally. There is an episode of Futurama, which uh, Nick. Oh God! There's an episode of Futurama which me, oh. which Nick and I have seen individually. We didn't watch it together, but we've only the two of us have only seen it ourselves once. Oh, and, I think I know which episode you're going on about then. It's the one with, where Fry discovers the fossilised remains of his dog. Back yeah. in, and I never, ever want to see it again. It was a great episode, but I never want to see it ever again. Yeah, it tells him that stare there will be back, at, back, yeah. back soon, and then obviously goes into the... Have you seen this episode? I've seen them all. I've yeah. got them all. So you you know, I don't really remember it, if I'm honest. But it's like all through the seasons, and dog's still there getting weaker and weaker, and then just lies down lies and down, dies. closes his eyes. It's like... It's so sad. So it was cause it's, it, at the Christ. end because he's trying to uh, clone his dog and then he he loses his DNA. And he goes, you know, it, you know, it's probably not fair. He probably didn't even. Wait no, he the um, the, he yeah, he probably forgot about. Probably me. forgot about me, but he didn't. It's well, no, they so outside the pizza shop. Well, no, when um, when he accidentally went into the future, his dog was only three years old. They're just about to clone him, and they realise that he died age fifteen. And he thought, oh, you know what, don't bother, he lived another 12 years, he must have had a really good life. And then it fucking stabs you in the heart. Yeah, I never want to see that episode again, ever. I remember watching that, I was at this girl's house in London who I was sort of seeing at the time. And we'd just sort of met, and we were watching Futurama, and that went on. And I was like, I can't cry in from this girl. I'm yeah, it was to too me. soon in the relationship <laughs> to really go that far, and I was like... Fucking hell, this is hard. The, Just going into like, the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> do Wait, do that. That Coughing fit. Hmm? Thick cough. <laughs> do about 10 or 12 in a row, and then you get your excuse for having water, guys. Wait, um, I completely forgot. You've used that before, haven't you? I completely forgot one of the best animated films ever, and again, it's a heart stabber. Um, you would love it, Stu, if you've not seen it. Up. I've oh. seen Up. Up is great, yeah. I didn't find the bit that everyone finds upsetting the most upsetting. No, the most upsetting is, spoiler alert for people who've not seen it, the most upsetting for me is, is it at, towards the end when he's looking through the photo album again? Again, I've only ever seen it once. No, I think, from memory, the most upsetting bits were when they kept shunning the bird away. Or was it the dog? Mm. I can't remember. Oh, when dog, they were ostracising yeah. one of them. And it's like, keeps dog. going back, he's trying to be friends. And they're like, fuck off. Yeah. And then I was like, give me a fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> I see myself in this character. N- Stu, I have to, I have to know because I love Finding Nemo, but I was <coughs> never, I was never, uh, apart from apart from the very, very, very end, literally the last line of the film, which maybe draws a glistening eye. Uh, I can't say Finding Nemo moved me to the plateau that it apparently moved you. Um, why? Tons. Did, why? Um, his little spaz fin. Little things like that, where he's a, he's a trier. There's bits where, like, when he's separated from... Not only is he his mum dead and he's lost from his dad, he, like, um, gets sub, um, separated and then put in the dentist fish tank. There's that. There's just fucking tons of loss and, and desperation. You got, and you've got Jeff yeah, and the Pelican. Soldiers on! His little monkey thing. It's a good film. And Jeffy Rush is a pelican, you can't go wrong. Everyone's good in that film. Everyone. Stone of Turtles. Ah, the Donna surfers Turtles. and the permanently stoned. <laughs> Australian shark. I don't really have a favourite bog standard Disney because I'm a bit apathetic to them. So I'd probably say Jungle Book because it is a good film. But I, I could, I'd be happy never to see that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lest it break down an emotional what, barrier what, of six the, yeah, what, the Jungle Book? Oh, right. <clears throat> Uh, just because it, it's apathy it's not that it's bad but I, 
uh, it's not something I'd do you, particularly ever want to watch. Do you get, emotion, a few do you get emotional at other films? Lots. Like what? You, Specific instances. Things with speeches. Yeah. Purple speeches. Yeah. <laughs> so, which Rocky. is usually sci-fi films. Or, yeah. 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 Tell you what, I got. It. I remember this getting emotional at, at the cinema watching the new Star Trek film, where at the beginning, it's um, I can't even remember what happens in it. But um, at the beginning, it's got Kirk's dad, yeah. who takes command of this ship that's going down, um, and he's just like an ensign, but he, he takes command of it, and then he's on the vid screen with his wife, who's giving birth to his kid on like one of the escape shuttles and it's like so fucking heroic and you're like oh my god this has really affected me <laughs> really affected me you're so heroic so heroic <laughs> digging into your own legs yeah. <laughs> trying to feel the other one I remember here. distinctly it was in the first year of university we were watching um, Armageddon and the bit where like have you all seen Armageddon? Mm. Yeah. Yes, but once. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it once. Yeah, same, twice, I think. I the think. same here, only once, and not because it was so moving. I don't want to see it again. I just thought it was really mediocre. I thought it was, I, I really loved those films at that time. At time, like the, the Jerry Bruckheimer films were really good at that time. So it was that going in sixty seconds, The Rock, Con Air, proper nineties action was was a, it was a great period at that time. But um, the bit where they realise one of them's got to stay to to detonate the bomb to destroy the asteroid and um, I think Ben Affleck draws the short straw and um, Bruce Willis kind of kids him and then pushes him into like the escape pod and then he does it and then he's on the fucking screen to um, to his daughter telling her goodbye and he's like oh he's such a hero <laughs> fucking well gets straight Hero See, moments yeah. always get me. See, the thing is, right, there's, there's so much damn heroism in The Return of the King that, yeah, that's an eye-waterer for me, Return don't of the King. I don't, don't know if that had that effect. It did Any of the rings. Yeah, Return yeah. of the King. Re oh, maybe when they were riding off towards um, the thingies out of that big white city in the third. I mean, it's like a suicide mission. Yeah. Because he's trying... Um, no, yeah, yeah, right, there's this, there's this bit. The bit that really gets me is... Uh, so, Mordor is, like, <coughs> onslaughting Minas Tirith, the White City. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all hope looks lost. And then on the horizon, you see the Rohirrim, all the horse riders from Rohan. And uh, King Theoden, led by Bernard Hill, again, d delivers this empowered speech, you know. And then they're all chanting, DEATH! And then they run, and the music gets really powerful and soulful, and yeah, that's a... Uh... The bit the bit that got me in Return of the King is at the end, when, when they're at Minas Tirith. Which end? The bit... I, yeah, I was going to tell you which end. Which of the 27 different They're, they're at Minas Tirith, and they're all on, they're all on the top. And yeah, so... They're no, coming out, he's married, um, he's married Liv Tyler, and they come up and they find the, the four hobbits, and everyone fucking bows to them. And I was like, that was like... That was a I significant moment. Never, never, that that, that really got nothing me. Nothing for me because no, I've me. already checked out that film by that point. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that is no. me. It should have ended at that point. I fuck thought. off. We watched it together, didn't we? Yeah. It was the, it was like some form of torture at the end where we've been sat in the same small seats because we're tall. Like, need to go, need to peep. That's how I felt. Film. You know, Please end. You know what? Right. I uh, I would agree with you if it went with the fact that it's fucking awesome. Uh, whereas the endings aren't awesome. Yes, it is. No. What about when it's the, the wedding? You go. All right, this, this is the end. No, it's because he's, he's in hospital. Well, not in hospital, but he's recovering. <laughs> and they all come in. No, maybe that's it. No. Yeah, and then Gandalf comes and he gives on the really gay look like, "Go on, lads, just go at each other for." Then, then the back at no, the, the, the Shire. Then they're back at the uh, yeah. city. Then they're back at the Shire. It's like, come on. It doesn't matter. Eh? It's awesome. A film I couldn't wait to go off because I thought it was dreadful um, was Transformers 3. I know I've already ranted in an earlier podcast about Transformers 3, but I must have spent the entire last half of that film going, end! Please, end! Yeah. I had a different thing to that because, although it wasn't great, I was going at least to send Transformers 2 because I think Transformers 2 was way worse. I thought they were exactly the same film. With different characters in it. Transformers 2 did have the wood fight scene though. Yeah. That's wood. cool. With Optimus getting his sword out for the first time in the And scene. then getting killed about five seconds later. Oh, what about Bumblebee being kept hostage in the first? That was an emotional. Yeah, it was, no, but the torture in him, it's like, because he's a heroic. Even though he doesn't speak, he's kind of. America. Heroic. I remember um, 
President's speech in Independence Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a big one. Which I'm embarrassed to admit that I found... Moving. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's... A, that's Rocky. Oh, yeah, but Rocky is... Yeah, yes, it fucking upsets you and stuff, but that's an, an awesome film and one that's designed to, like... God, two human spirit... Like, Independence Day is, like, just some... Alien special shit. effects blockbuster <coughs> film, which you don't expect emotional shit out of. Rocky's upsetting quite in, in a lot of different ways, mm. in a lot of different occasions where he's trying to impress Adrian and he's in his shitty little flat with fucking beer bottles stuffed down cushions and stuff. He's <laughs> like, don't be afraid. It's like, how could you not be afraid? <laughs> what, about, what about you, Phil? I know you have joined in, but, but me, Nick and Stu have been rather vocal on this. What about you? Is there anything that really... What films, yeah, what films uh, get you gushy inside? Wait, but let's answer the Disney thing first. Yeah. I already did early. Original type of Disney favourite? Probably Aladdin, because that's the only one I can really remember. P- Disney Pixar? Uh, probably Wally. Wally gets me. Wally, t- Wally is a great film. Um, and, and, t- and I totally agree with you on Toy Story 3 as well. Toy Story 3, I don't want to spoil it, but it's such an emotional. There's no way you'll not feel for that moment, because there's a bit where it's like the worst possible thing's going to happen. And then they come to accept it very... It, like, one person accepts it and then reassures yeah. someone else and it's like... Well, isn't it about sort of getting old and kind of almost becoming the thing obsolete is, in a sense? Th- there's, in, there's quite kind a few of. moments in it because uh, an undercurrent thing about it... And this is what I really liked about Toy Story 3. These same actors who voiced uh, Andy and Sid in Toy Story 1 and 2 for Andy... Those same actors return in Toy Story 3 and, you know, like the characters, they're now, like, you know, 18-year-old guys going off to college, you know, and Sid's a bin man and uh, and Andy's going off to college. Sid. And there's an emotional level that doesn't even connect with the toys. It's Andy moving home from his mum, you know, and it's the toys leaving. It's just, yeah, it's, there's, there's a real emotional level to Toy Story 3. It's a great film, terrific film. Disney Pixar are awesome, fact. You know, just you can't uh, they they know the formula. I'm ashamed to admit it. Why'd you be ashamed of that? Because it's not very macho. <laughs> Nothing really. And I'm all crap. about the macho, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of there's like an Arnie moment and that's like super heroic that ever got me going. Terminator two. Terminator two, yeah. yeah. You're right, Terminator two, of course. Uh, last action hero, potentially. Maybe a bit in last action hero. Um, probably not many others. Not many, not many others. You mean you weren't, you weren't weeping and Predator and he's going get to the chopper. No, no, because he's being a badass and he's yeah, get to the going, chopper. I'm getting yeah! out of the glory. This <laughs> <laughs> makes me want to eat steak and drink the beer. Have you seen Predator? Yeah, of course I have. Really. Yes, and I, I love the first Predator. I think Predator 2 is a bit meh, but yeah, the first... Long, but Predator no. 2 is good on its own, man. Predator 2 is alright. No, it's meh. The first one is awesome. Plus though. it's got an alien skull in it at the end. Yeah. Danny Glover's sweating like a mother all the way through it. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's fucking hot in our It's got it Colombian hot. drug cartel members who just go <laughs> in the face with cocaine <laughs> and then go, cocaine! <laughs> the thing is, right... <laughs> Dutch couldn't kill a predator in Predator One. I can't buy that Danny Glover could in he Predator. He does kill it. What? He does kill it. No, the predator kills itself. Yeah, because you know. Right, what, what's it gonna do if it doesn't? Probably die a slow, painful death. Right. Because point... Dutch is there with a rock about to smash. Which his is skull. the most metal way of <laughs> yeah. dying. He <laughs> physically smashed it longer than a rock. Fact is, Schwarzenegger didn't kill him. Okay, Schwarzenegger didn't kill him. Yet Glover managed to kill it. I don't buy that. Uh, the first Predator is really good. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, I, I can't remember if I already told you guys. Did I tell you about? Danny Glover killed it with its own fucking technology, though, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. Ernie killed it with fucking sticks and shit. <laughs> the first one is superior. It must have. Yeah, should have made a joke about sticks and stones and breaking them. That would have been Point. pitch perfect. What are you going to say, Dan? What have you I seen? can't remember if I already said this on the previous pod or whether I said it to you off the record. But did I tell you about off the record because <laughs> this is official. <laughs> but. <laughs> Did I tell you guys the story I read in Total Film magazine? You know, obviously in, in every magazine you've got the Your Letters section. Is it a, a Predator fact? No, it's actually for Skyfall. All right, uh, okay, but, yeah. it, um, but this guy wrote in, this letter made me laugh, this guy wrote in saying that he was watching Skyfall at the cinema. 
Uh, with the exception to Phil, obviously. We've all seen it now. You've seen it now, right? I can, mm -hmm. I can spoil it. Uh, there's a... Well, the spoil, the spoil is a poor choice of words. But the bit at the end where, it, you know, shit's going down in Scotland. Um, there's a bit where Daniel Craig says, GET TO THE CHAPEL! And uh, this... <laughs> You can see where this is going. This guy wrote in saying that a guy in his cinema went, GET TO THE CHAPEL! And the entire cinema burst out laughing. <laughs> no, I think that uh, towards the end of Skyfall, it goes a bit like Home Alone. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, for yeah. four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it is fucking Home Alone. <laughs> I watched Home Alone 2 at, at Christmas. Which is not a patch on the first one. No, but it's still good. Again, Home Alone One's a bit where it, it gets you a bit, you know, where um, you know, yeah. at the end the, the, he's reunited with his parents. But like, there's a point where he's on like a, like an old New York tenement, and he's thrown fucking bricks at a guy's head. Yeah. <laughs> it would kill him. It would kill him. So I, I it's have, okay because the bird was uh, immortal. So yeah, it's fine. they're immortal. <laughs> Hang on, I don't think you'd be in a good state with a fucking painting that's in swoops. <laughs> yeah. fucking swoops. That would be pretty fucking. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch Baby's Rubens. Day Out? No. Yeah. No. Is that a pig thing? No, it's no, baby yeah. on its own in New York going around crazy and all kinds of mayhem. <laughs> so you have oh. seen it? Yeah, it's, I've seen, there's that one, there's Baby's Day 2 as well. Now it's got some fine actors in it, Baby's and Day it's, Out. Uh, it's got Joe blinders. Mantegna in it, it's got Joe Pantaliano in it, it's got some good... Lots know, of Joes in it. Yeah, it's got a lot of Joes, a lot of gangster Joes. Uh, but that is like Home Alone, it's people suffering ridiculous, painful things that would break your jaw or kill you, you know, and they're just able to... Grr, I've got a red mark on my forehead, you know, it's, 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 it's a, a cartoon, cartoon. It. it's a cartoon, it's a live action cartoon. Same they, were good, they were good films on alone, I, I distinctly had the pleasure of going to see them, to see them at the cinema. Have you seen three? No. Four? No. Five? No. There was no. a fifth. A, I'm sadly to say there was a fifth, yes. One of them featured a woman. There's one of them featured <laughs> a um, girl. Such madness. In what context? <laughs> There's a child that is a girl. Oh, right, I'm guessing that's the fifth one. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I feel like the cry kid where it's a girl. It's like, no. She'd be at home embroidering or something. It <laughs> <laughs> actually wasn't it Hilary Swank who was in that, actually, who turned out to be it. kind of a badass, let me find out. Actually, uh, obviously, me, Phil and Nick play Draw Something, and uh, Phil sent me a drawing a few days ago, actually, which simply wrote, uh, a place where women hang out. And then, <laughs> kitchen. No, I didn't. I put a woman's place. That's it, and out kitchen. Who's a, who's a sexist one there, though, then? What do you mean? You knew. You instantly put it. Oh, right, ah, right, yes. Well, well, yeah. I've gotten so Women's bored. Rights. Yeah. I've gotten so bored with Draw Something. Yeah, I've, very rarely. I've started much. putting Hitler in everything. As, you know, me and Phil are having a little game at the moment where we can see if we can get Hitler into each other's drawings, yeah. Have you, have you ever seen my latest one? Uh, yeah, I've not looked at it, though. Hitler. My last one was Hitler holding a beer and just a circle around the beer. <laughs> Well, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil mine for you, but mine is of Hitler on a ferry. So. <laughs> is the word ferry, by the way? Yes. It makes it much more fun. Draw something's pointless. No, I saw, if, no, I saw you, through it straight away. If you enjoy drawing, it's and yes, time. you can't you can't draw to your best ability on a touchscreen phone. But if you enjoy drawing, I think it's quite it's a fun. Not a game. game. No, it's a pastime. It's, yeah, it's just a pastime. something to kill a few minutes while you're on the bog. Yeah. But you I spend an O bog, so you probably need something a bit more <laughs> substantial. I can't get in the spirit of it. You're not, you're you're not besting so. anybody. Therefore, there's no point. Then why are you playing Dark Souls? You're not besting anyone on that. I'm trying to best the computer. Ooh, 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 a computer? Mm. <laughs> I think just... Like most single player games? Like Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but Matt, you get, to, you get to fuck people or enjoy a story. Yeah, so I'm not saying it's amazing. To be honest, the bit I've seen you play of it, uh, it doesn't. I'm, I'm I was getting pissed off of it, and I'm playing it. It's not the best. Yeah, but it doesn't look beautiful. It no, doesn't, it look, doesn't, it look, doesn't look captivating in any way. Uh, that's a really bad section to show you Blight Town. For anyone who's played Dark Souls, Stuart is currently in Blight Town, and it's not sewer a, levels. Yeah, it's sewer levels. It's not a good place to start. Whereas the Undead Berg, um, which is just before, like the first place you go, that's all out like, in the open, all beautiful light textures, and mm. it's in an old medieval like, castle type thing. 
But you've got, uh, you know, you got those weird scorpion type creature things that were, that she was killing, and they made walrus noises, and I'm, I don't dig that. What, what noises walrus make? I know for a fact that they were walrus noises. When you killed them and they made that, like, <gasps> noise, I know for a fact that that's a walrus noise. Walrus. And, uh, yeah, they need to check the sound department. Just saying. So as it's now 2013, and we can look back at 2012, what, Dan, would you say was the best film? Best film, you know what, uh, I said this last week, and I st- uh, last week, last podcast, and I stand by it, and I know that both choice, one choice in particular is maybe a bit safe, and the other one perhaps controversial just because I'm a massive Middle Earth fan, but it's too hard to call between The Dark Knight Rises and The Hobbit for me. Film? Best film. I love that it's uh, Dark Knight Rises, with honourable mentions to Avengers. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, yeah, we'll do that. We'll say our favourite film and uh, and one or two honourable runners-up, yeah. So, yeah, for me, Dark Knight Rises and definitely Hobbit and The Artist. I haven't seen The Artist. I haven't seen The Artist. I've seen... Um... Wait, wait, what? The ignorance from this yeah, man. Yeah, that is pure ignorance. I speak for the 99%. You speak, you speak for those ignorant people who went to the cinema and then came out two minutes later going, I didn't know it was a silent black and white film. And it's a, yeah, but I do know that it's a silent black and, and white film. And it's a fantastic film. And therefore will be a violent like the plague. It's, it's funny, it's got heart, it's charming, it's sad. It's, it's, oh, we, we had that on uh, uh, HMV, and it's one of the few films where you can watch it because there's no fucking music. That, obviously you don't get the music in it, but you can understand exactly what's going on. Just by watching it, it's terrific film. It. And it, I agree, it looks, and, it looks awesome. And you would enjoy it much better with the actual. Of course, I would, and I enjoyed just watching it. Um, wasn't the artist last year? It was the very yeah, twenty twelve. Oh, sorry, the year before. Sorry. No, it was, the, it was January of twenty twelve. Oh, okay. It was one of the, it was the it was after the girl with the dragon tattoo. I think it was the first film I saw last year because the first film I saw last year was Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Can't Which was good. Much other films I did see. Yeah, yeah, I'm struggling to be fair. Prometheus. It was good. Fucking gash. It, There's not gash. It wasn't gash it, at all. It wasn't, it wasn't ga- great. Though. It wasn't gash, but it was no, certainly it disappointing. Yeah, it was disappointing. I'd say there's a big chunk of that that should have been put on the Blu-ray as a director's cut. Because apparently there was a lot more of... Um, I can't remember his name. The guy who's old man makeup. Oh, oh uh, Guy Pearce. Yeah, Guy Pearce. there's meant to be a whole section, apparently, where yeah. he was a young man, That's which true. explains See, why they got Guy Pearce in. Rather than just some old chap. Yeah, yeah because so, guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because yeah. yeah, guy Pierce feels sorely underused in that film. Really, but yeah, it, apparently there was a whole section of not necessarily setting up the company, but him finding out about the whole thing, and then it obviously leading on to how it how it did. They should have so. just put the entire the last. Yeah, I think you're right. Should have put definitely part of the end of it on the thing. Maybe the last two hours or so on Blu-ray special special features, and then keep it how it is. I think it'd be worthwhile. But then again, take this opportunity, by the way, director's to say that Prometheus, which is touches on areas involving ancient aliens and some of the theories that they touch upon, I'd just like to mention. Rest in peace, Philip Coppins, the guy who's on Joe Rogan podcast about a month, two months ago. Oh yeah, he's now dead. Yeah, it's shame. Everyone throwing out rest in peace, and we've mentioned it this one and the last one. Jerry Anderson. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Anderson. Respect. Respect. Yeah. No, no, you can't poo poo on <laughs> calling out the dead. <laughs> so, what was your favourite film last year, Phil? Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, um, favourite in terms of how good it was, how much I enjoyed it, probably um, don't know. But then. Followed by Skyfall slash Expendables 2. Expendables 2, not the best film in the world ever. I'm enjoying. well aware of it, but it was balls out, fucking action scene after action oh, scene. Another, been amazing. Another honourable mention them from last year, The Red. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, Red is great. Definitely the best Indonesian film. I've, I've seen that seen. year. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, again, I saw a lot of films last year. I I could, I, well, I'd, yeah. I'd be happy to shout out The Grey, Cabin in the Woods. Cabin was my favourite. Do you like you like the grey? I, I, I like the grey. It wasn't in my my top three. Cabin in the Woods has been my favourite film last year. A lot of it's to do with how clever it was, and a lot of people, a lot of the derision people levelled of it is because they just blatantly missed the point of what it was about. 
Uh, I thought it was mega clever, very funny, very dark. We were proper laughing at it. I've read the well. fourth wall. Is it stuff like that? No, no. I've heard. No. We, but it's not always. It, it, it's not. It is not. It's like it, the way I describe it to everyone is it's like every horror film you've ever seen, and like no other horror film you've ever seen. It's very. It, no, that's very exactly clever. what it is. That's exactly it's very what it is. clever. It's every horror film you've seen ever seen, but it's it's actually also the complete opposite. Like it's hard, it's hard, but yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 without, without spoiling it, isn't the twist mentioned early on as well? Um, uh, yeah, pretty much like you know what's going on, but, but yeah, then there's yeah, another. You sort of guess it. But well, then there's like a reveal towards the end as well, which kind of throws another spanner. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Yeah, it? there's like multiple levels to it. Like the one, the one. It was just very clever from the beginning to when, like the the very beginning, you you sort of posturing like the typical. The typical like Friday the Thirteenth kind of characters of like these young kids who are going to go to this lake to have fun, you know, and you know and course, shit's going to happen. And of course, they encounter a creepy old man on the way. Yeah, a creepy old man is giving them foreboding, you know, tidings. In fact, what's the funny tagline for it? it but um, what's fun? It's just it's just it it has standards like that, and it plays on them like. At the beginning, it has like Chris Hemsworth is like this, you know, he's Thor, obviously, and he's this big burly guy playing like a teenager. He's meant to be this thoughtless jock. It was shot a few years ago. Yeah, it was. It was figured it was shot a few years ago, but it was only released last year. Right, they've, I, they've changed the tagline. The tagline was something like, if you encounter a creepy man on the way to a cabin, keep walking, something like that. Change but but that they've one. changed the tagline. <laughs> it's a bit of a long tagline, that really. But the tagline now is, if you hear a strange sound outside, have sex. Right. And, that's the kind of, and that's the kind of film it was, wasn't it? It was, it was just it was yeah. funny. Like Chris Hemsworth playing the jock, but the jock was really thoughtful, really nice, a really nice guy, as opposed to like a complete douchebag, like in most films. It it had every standard of a horror film and then subverted it in some way. Uh, so he played the jock out of American Pie. Stifler. No. No, more sort of, no, but more intelligent. More intelligent is like he's kind of a clever guy. I think he, first the first bit where you kind of realise that it's different to normal is like his. He's talking to his friend who is coming to her room and she's just wearing her underwear. And then he notices, which. yeah, which is, is good. But um, he notices she's got this book and she's going to take it to, to this cabin. And he takes it and goes, What's this? And like, she, he goes into this rant about it and you think he's just being a douchebag. But it turns out um, he just thinks the book's rubbish. He says, Take this other book and said, It's far better. Yeah. You'll get better <laughs> grades if you read this book because it's clever. And it's, it's very, it's very clever and it is. interesting. It's, like yeah, that. it's really good. There's that, obviously, Dark Knight. I think you can't get away with Dark Knight. Um, the Raid was excellent. I really enjoyed uh, Dread. I really enjoyed that film, which was silly. But um, Kyle Urban must have had a sore face after filming that. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle Urban's surprisingly good in that. Um, there's another film that, that I'd seen last year that I really enjoyed. Um, Skyfall was good. It was a good year for films. Argo was good. I recommend Argo. I, 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 I'm, I'm sad I didn't see Argo, but apparently that's, that's meant to be a really good film. For Ben Affleck, it's, it's impressive. But um, no, you know you can't say that because he made he made the, the town, which is good. Goodwill good Hunting. Goodwill Hunting, which is uh, ace. But yeah, he has made some phantoms. <laughs> yeah, he has made some. Now, uh, music's a tougher one because I know that Stuart was claimed since leaving HMV. He's quite don't know shit about music and so you can't say there was any songs or albums that came out last year that you liked. Um, I don't think of Bob. <laughs> okay. Were there any song- <laughs> were there any songs that you became aware of though that you enjoyed? Um last year marked my introduction to a Mono Earth, which I have You <laughs> needlessly pooped. Yeah, I need that I I <clears throat> admit it, I just disregarded it uh, offhand and then was introduced to it and then um converted pretty much. Fair enough. Not for you, Dan. No. About being yeah. manly. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Nick? Any favourite music? For- one, one thing I do want to mention about last year that I, I, sh- I should have mentioned Looper. Oh, of course. Looper was a terrific Looper's film. A great film. All these films I've not seen. You like Looper? I really, I want to watch them. It's Looper just, was awesome. Um, they usually go to the pictures with somebody, so that kind of cut out any chance of me going to the cinema unless I go on my own. See, so I don't go on the yeah. own. You know what? You know, I've only been to one film. Uh, I'm about to. Do. Th- maybe one or two. The first film I went to watch on my own was um, Watchmen, and it was, it was so amusing because people thought, "Oh, it's going to be this mega blockbuster." It's not going to be a blockbuster. It's such a geeky cult film, 
And I went to watch it at the IMAX and people were like, yeah, wow. And then came out of it with long faces going, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? <laughs> Apart from me, which was like, this fucking is. You know what? 2012 marked the first time ever I've been to see a film by myself. And by the end of the year, I must have seen five films by myself. I, I watched The Woman in Black was my first experience. Fucking like, out on your own? On my own. Which made it, <laughs> which made it a, definitely a more scary experience. I th- I thoroughly recommend anyone go and watch a horror film by yourself with no one to hold on to. It's great. Um, then I ended up watching The Avengers by myself, ironically, because it had been out so long and everyone had seen it and no one would see it with me. I watched that by myself. I watched uh, I watched Prometheus by myself on a Friday night during the uh, during the European Cup when England were playing and I didn't want to watch. I went to the cinema. Was it dead? It was surprisingly yeah. busy. Was it full of women who were trying to get away from football? Well, there's enough men in there. You're not men. Also, they would not go watch <laughs> some men also don't like football, I have you know, and I'm one of them. They're not men. <laughs> I think you're in the minority in this argument, Stu. About Kurt? No, it's a 50 50. No, I'm part. Do you I'm, enjoy football, Phil? Yeah. He's a Liverpool sport. I'm not as keen on it as Stu, but. Oh, I, in fact, I, I like Suarez getting up to his old tricks. Accidentally handballing a goal. I thought it meant racially right. abusing something. There's, been, there's <laughs> a big difference between accidentally handballing and deliberately handballing. Yeah, what happened was he accidentally handballed, profited from it, and then just like played on. Yeah, but he celebrated like he scored a goal. <coughs> he did score a goal. It was 2 1. An, illeg- an illegitimate goal. Uh, anyway, uh, any music you liked last year? Nick? Uh, I can't remember if it was last year or not, because pretty much like Sue, since I've left HMV, uh, I, you know, what good music comes out. Very recent, you know. Even at HV, you sort of noticed a lot of people's second albums were gash. Lady Gaga's was gash. Uh, Fault of the Machines was a bit, bit pap. Uh, Rihanna's was gash. Of course, Florence's uh, first album wasn't good either. I enjoyed Fl- uh, Florence's first album. Uh, pretty much everyone's album this year has been shit, unless there's been a first album. Um, so that's usually an indie bands. I'm try- um, the Joy Formidable, uh, you probably don't have heard of. They're a Welsh band. I really enjoyed their album. That was it. Uh, I enjoyed the song by Karen O for um, Fair Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Fair Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, which is a remake of a Led Zeppelin song. So don't care, don't really care. Uh, no, it does. Came out last year. You know, cover or not, it counts. To be honest, most modern music's not great anymore. So I'm not. I'm not at the cusp of it. I don't care about it enough anymore. I thought so. there was some terrific music last year, but I listen to the radio at work, so I hear a lot of new music. But I thought there was some terrific. terrific. I thought there was some terrific music. Uh, Favourite song, even though I first heard it in 2011, but it was released as a single in 2012. Favourite song of the year would be Goodbye Kiss by Kasabian. I think that's a great song. I hate Kasabian. Mm-hmm. I hate them. Mm-hmm. No, that's a terrific... They, they, they're, they're people who think they're just awesome and then they're just kind of mediocre. Like, like, fatty, like Oasis. Fatty Boom Boom. That was good. <laughs> fatty Boom Boom was great. Yeah. Um, I loved Click by... Uh, by Kanye and uh, God, it, yeah. Kanye uh, song, writes a song about a gold digger gets a Kardashian pregnant lol irony we covered film and music what about video games what was your well we didn't I didn't send me music but that's oh my bad let's, well, let's go back to the <laughs> no we had an argument over that um, I'll just run them down briefly uh, Deftones Coin uh, All You Can um, Down released an EP the Purple EP uh, Lana Del, I saw Lana Del Rey on your iPad. Spanish Shankan Anger, Anger Denial Acceptance. Lana Del Rey was good. I think that was 2011, though. No, no, the album. Lana was... Del Rey was definitely this last year. This oh, year. well, that then. Born to Die. Um, uh, I, the new Newton Faulkner album was great as well. No, uh, wasn't. Fuck off, Newton Faulkner. Newton Faulkner's amazing. <coughs> um, you fucking fake middle class dreadlocks, you cunt. <laughs> uh, Linkin Park's new album was surprisingly disappointing. I was really surprisingly like, uh, disappointing. I, I'd say that's surprisingly on fucking trend. No, I was. I'm a massive Linkin Park fan. And I was sadly very disappointed with the latest album. It pained me to be disappointed by it, but that was a disappointment. Um, and the Calvin Harris album was awesome as well. Great album. Anyway, continue, Phil. I think that's, <laughs> that's it. That's Fair that's enough. the one. That, there's a couple like. Um, I think this was 2011, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. That's a cracking album. The first one. I think that was 2011, though. No. Yeah, I, can't, you know, I just don't dig their sound, the Gallagher Brothers sound. Apart from the odd song, obviously, like Wonderwall, etc. I'm just, meh. 
not a fan. Oh, it's not the time to have an Oasis argument here. No. Yeah. And I'm especially not even, from the guy. I'm not even a major Oasis fan. Especially from the guy the other day who said all the Beatles songs are shit. Well, that's that's factually incorrect. Yeah. Well, factually incorrect. That's open to interpretation. <laughs> My interpretation is yeah, the ed- Beatles suck cock. He enjoys Oasis but doesn't like the Beatles. It's kind of like. It does not odd. compute. Doesn't work. <laughs> how can you not? Way. How can you not like Yesterday by George Harrison? <clears throat> is that just George Harrison? No, it's That's not the Beatles. It's it's the Beatles. No, it's written by George Harrison. Right. Under the banner of the Beatles or George Harrison? At least by the Beatles. Yeah, isn't it? it's the right. Beatles. How do you not like Yesterday? It's a terrific song. Because the Beatles song and his every Beatles. single Beatles song I've ever heard is shit. He's an ignorant man. He's an I'm ignorant. not an ignorant man. I I've got, got an opinion. I'm going to play middle ground here. I don't particularly like the Beatles, but. Or as a result of when I think it was a bit of a trend with indie bands who say oh and who are we influenced by to gain some form of cred oh the Beatles I love the Beatles I'm always into Beatles Beatles are a major influence on me fuck off they're not that's because I bet most bands at least from the 80s were influenced by the Beatles but uh, if the, but, uh, and then bands obviously since then have been influenced by the bands influenced <coughs> by the Beatles how do you feel about the Monkeys too? the Monkeys I used to watch the TV programme <laughs> Crazy. So, so as, a, <laughs> as a result, you must have liked some of the music you heard. Uh, not particularly, no. My mum was a big fan of the Monkeys. She used to subscribe spots? to Monkeys Monthly. <laughs> really? <laughs> Such a thing existed. Uh, well, well, they had the huge merchandise, the Monkeys. They were, they were, the Monkeys were everywhere. What they about were the, the first base? manufactured band. What about the Bay City Rollers? Um, I don't know Bay City Rollers song. The time I were off, I'm sure I do not do You will do, I'm sure. Anyway. Did they do... Um, oh, no, I'll... No, that was the uh, thing is, wasn't it? Which yeah. was the Raging Horses, or whatever it is. Crazy Horses. Crazy horses. That was the Osmonds. Yeah. I was confused. Crazy Horses. Anyway, 2012 in review. <laughs> Phil, any gaming highlights? Did you buy any games? I know that you're a big fan of um, Dishonored. Yeah. Still need Next. To pick that up. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I still want to, I do want to, genuinely want to play it. Though. Dishonored is... Uh, good, probably not for you because it's stealth. Do you not? Is it because um, it's stealth, or do you not care for steampunk? Uh, both. I lo- I think steampunk's awesome. Uh, what else? Pretentious. Is- Let me guess. It's middle class. Middle class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> the only time I'll have time for steampunk is in Final Fantasy. That's because yeah. it's fucking batshit crazy enough not to just be steampunk. Next. Read a, a good book. I don't. I think that was uh, two thousand. Yeah, it was two thousand actually. It's um, a book called Born Shaker by Cherry Priest. That's a steampunk the zombie type mm-hmm. of novel. Recommend reading it. It's good. What's it called? Uh, Born Shaker. Born Shaker. Mm-hmm. Okay, I will note that. <clears throat> Any other gaming highlights? Um, as Nick and I were discussing earlier, Hitman Absolution. It's quite. That good. wouldn't be a map. Of nice. all the games of 2012 that I bought, though, there's you can discount COD. Even yeah, though COD, I fucking, COD was, I yeah. Lo- well, I love it. I love Black Ops 2, but I'm discounting it from my list because it's it's a yearly thing. It's probably not going to... it probably be better than the next one because that'll be Modern Warfare 3, 4, probably. Copy and paste from the last one. Oh, Black Ops 2 is just... <clears throat> the single player is one of the worst... It was shocking how shit that was. There's shocking. One important event in gaming this year, and that was Mass Effect 3. I was going to say, which was both the off. high and low light of my, <coughs> my gaming year. Walking Dead as well, that's a highlight of the year. I bought that, but I've not played it. Everyone's raving about that game. Very good. Yeah. Uh, can't think what else came out last year that I bought. I thought Skyrim, but no, that was 2011. Was that 2011? Yeah, in fact, you know what, I, uh, I'm i ashamed to say I got Skyrim Christmas 2011 as a present, still so haven't played it. You fucking insane. Ingrateful bastard. No, I, I, I really want to play it. You know what my problem was last year? And I refuse to do the same this year if I do ever get Black Ops 2. I spent too much time last year just playing Modern Warfare 3. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to make that mistake again of just playing the same game again and again and again. Because um, I would love to play Skyrim, you know. it's Skyrim, everything about Skyrim appeals to me. I've just never found the time to play Skyrim it. Skyrim slid Modern Warfare 3 with Glass Sword. Good. Good. Just wa- it off a cliff. 
Great, I want to blow it. Um, how about you, Nick? Uh, well, I was just looking at a few, a few of the selections here. Um, nothing's coming out of me. Um, I really can't think, to be honest. Um, there's been a lot of games that were really mediocre, but are okay. Um, Borderlands 3. Is that right? Two. Two, sorry. That was okay. Um, there's stuff like that that comes out at the start of the year as well that kind of... You forget about it, I'll get so overlooked. Yeah, because it's like so early in like, the year. Um, I bought it and then traded it within a week because some, I bought it for like just something to do. It was an impulse buy, Max Payne 3. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with it, but it came out like so early in the year, just everyone kind of forgot about it. I'm looking at here, there must be something I've played this year that was. Well, uh, uh, sorry, Diablo. Diablo. <coughs> I thought Three. LA Noir, but no, LA Noir was off two years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. 2011 is definitely a better year for games than, yeah. than last year. Um, Diablo 3, um, which was good the first way, first through game, first <coughs> sort of time through, and then you realise it's become a massive, massive grind, and really lost interest in that quite quickly after that. But no, it was first, perfect that you yawned on the word grind. Yeah, it's like, ooh. So, dull. Um, I played a lot of older games last year. Like Civ. Civ's always a standard game. What about you, Dan? You know what? I only bought, that I can think of, the top of my head, uh, three games. In fact, one of them was bought for me, actually, last year, and none of them were even released last year. I don't think I bought a single game that was released last year, apart from one at the very end, and that was a game that actually was three games together in one package, and therefore... What was that? Uh, it was a Ubisoft package, which contained... Uh, the Tom Clancy something? Tom Clancy something or other? No. Tom Clancy, something or other, or other? No, I'm afraid not. No. It, it, it was a Ubisoft package that contained an arcade game called Outland, which I had never heard of before, uh, and an original Xbox title I always wanted to play and didn't, called From, uh, Beyond Good and Evil, and an Xbox Live arcade game, again, that came out last year, that I always, not last year, 2011, that I always fancied, and never bought it and I saw it on offer these three games two of which I genuinely wanted to play and I thought I'll get that so even though that was a new uh, what was the other game sorry the third game I did, oh right yeah I didn't even say it uh, From Dust yeah I've heard that's going to be good which uh, I, I ended up playing that over Christmas I bought this as a treat for myself uh, to play over Christmas for when I finished work early on that Friday because I've not been on my Xbox since September I wanted to go home and play some Xbox and I ended up spending you know, any time I could go on the Xbox, the rest of the Christmas holiday, I played From Dust. And again, it's a typical Xbox Live ga uh, arcade game. It's not a massively long game. By the end of the Christmas holiday, I was finished with it, but really good game. But yes, yeah, so I bought these three games in one uh, for a tenner. I, thought, I saw the price, I thought, why not? You know, And so technically, that release, the three in one, came out in 2012, but I didn't actually... But the games themselves are from... 2011 and before, you know, so I didn't actually buy any games that came out last year. But uh, the games I did play, I bought an old Formula One, which I loved, and for the first time ever, obviously, I played Arkham Asylum, which again I loved. Yeah, I played Arkham, 100% of Arkham Asylum. Was City 2012? What? Arkham City. Arkham City. Oh, sorry, Arkham City. No, I think Arkham City was 2011. A chance. 100% of it. Every secret. I got all the yeah. secrets. And without cheating. Every, every, um... Season. Riddler trophy. Every Riddler trophy. Every, Fuck, everything yeah. in the main campaign I have done. Every side quest. Everything. It's, uh... And the hardest difficulty as well. It's, uh, easy to get all the riddles, yeah. Um, yeah, but the, my surprise is being asked to do so. Yeah, uh, okay. No, I, this I, is a I, great game. I, yeah. I, I have... No, this First is... First one was better than City. I disagree, no. but... Um, no, I love that I, from City. I know, I, it, it was a game that I was so involved in that I wanted to get every Riddler trophy and I made sure I got it. See, I didn't tell, this, never this had to cheat. Difference. Sorry, Dan, I, I, I'm talking about Arkham City, not Arkham Asylum. All right, yeah, well, yeah, well again, from only having played Asylum, I wanted all the trophies. Um, Arkham yeah. City's awesome. The ones in City, some of them are just ridiculous. Yeah. I gave up on it. I, I wanted to, but I got 
so far down I think I'd say 75% of them and I just couldn't, there was some where I couldn't even figure out how to begin to unlock the cage from one end of the map seamlessly glide over to another one and then fire a rope claw yeah, across the rope and then pain fire in the ass, but um, <clears throat> I was adamant that I wanted to because I loved that game so much and it had been about it must, it must have been 2011 because it must have been a long time since I played it started it again at, at max difficulty uh, and just completely did all the side quests everything all the riddles all the riddler icons I'd say the atmosphere in Asylum was better than City. Yeah, because obviously it's a, it's driving you along. And yeah, because in Arkham Asylum it's driving you along a story, whereas in Arkham City you can pretty much fuck about and do what you want. Um, and I agree, Arkham Asylum had a better story per se, but Arkham City you've got more characters, more sort of. If you like your bat law, miles better for Batman characters and. The, there was a cameo. Yeah, there was one of this one of the side <coughs> missions with my favourite Batman villain. Who I hope they'll use for three, and that Hush. was Hush. Yeah, that was a wicked side I quest. I love Hush. That was one of the better side quests. That was Hush. Um, Hush is probably one of my favourite Batman stories. It's definitely my top five. It's a superb villain. Yeah. yeah. Only villain. Plus, there was the line in it. Oh, Alfred basically paraphrasing. Alfred remind me of this. I'll so I'll investigate it tomorrow. Yeah. It's like yeah. I'll look at it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, the only boss it doesn't really feature. Well, there's a number of bosses it doesn't have in it. But <coughs> the only character you never see, I think, is Scarecrow. But everyone else has a feature in it. They kind of did a Scarecrow sequence in it anyway, but though with the Mad Hat. Yeah, the Mad Hat. Scarecrow. <coughs> the devil's in Arkham. Scarecrow in Asylum was, was one of the highlights, definitely. Yeah, definitely. The in- infer in Arkham City that he's dead. Right. He's, they get, he, get, he apparently gets washed out to sea, and then you find him on top of like one of these bridges, like on like the high rises. Um, you find his mask. It's just been made part of a nest of, of birds, ah. and seagulls. So you think, oh, is he dead or not? Well, of course, yeah, because uh, Killer Croc knocked him into the sea with Inti in Arkham Asylum. You see Killer Croc in in, this, in Arkham City, but you've got to mm. play it in a certain way to see him. Done all that shit. As, as sad as that sounds. <laughs> As- Asriel had a good bit in it as well. Yeah, yeah, he looked cool in it. I um, thought they could have... There's so much stuff, though, that it's... they. It's a fanboy's dream that they throw in all these characters, yeah. but they just don't use any of them properly. Yeah. I mean, you fight Deadshot, but then that's over with and done and forgotten about. Hush, I, I really hope they use it. Mad Hatter was too... No, nah, I, I never liked Mad Hatter. And... They used him a bit too much. The section was a bit too long for the character. Yeah, I thought. Um, yeah. But again, that's it's not even a game from last year. No. Um, it should have been though, because it was fucking. Two thousand eleven for games was very. Poor. I think they've actually. Twelve. <coughs> Two thousand twelve. Sorry. Yeah, it's weird. To, I think they had like uh, I was reading on BBC News that. Definitely CD sales were down like 10%, definitely. Actually, yeah, I believe console games were down. And, and console games were down as well. But, you know, they're saying console games uh, were down in in light of people buying app games. That's not it at all. It's just because there, there wasn't yeah. enough good games out. Yeah, totally. Because if, if, well. if there was, I would have definitely bought, bought some of them. Yeah, I think, they're, I think they're overpriced as well. It's like, when I th- I'm going to trade in COD, because I'm sick of it now. Um... And I'm probably going to trade in Hitman when I finish with it. You know what then? Because I'm not excited enough about Black Ops to get it. So I'm thinking maybe if you're going to trade it, maybe I could borrow it then in that case. Are you going to pay him? No, I don't give it him back. Oh, the longer you have money. it, the more money he loses. Uh, no, then I don't care. But COD holds its value generally. <laughs> not on trading, no. is it? Fine, I don't care. Anyway, uh, I think it's time we wrapped up. Cool. Um, Happy New Year! Happy January! Happy January! Hopefully you enjoyed today. You've, oh, we've before, all we, re- before we end, Dan <laughs> sent me the creepiest message New Year's Eve <laughs> ever. Because uh, Dan yeah. wanted to go out and was upset that none of us had plans to do anything. Well, me and him were working. Yeah, but I was, I was, uh, I was disheartened that uh, that yes, you were work. We work in New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I wasn't on New Year's Day. I was disheartened, but I thought at the very least we could have had a beer, 
you know, we didn't have to go out in town, we just sat around in front of the TV, had a beer, and, you know... Instead, he asked me, are your parents out? Are you home alone? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. you leave me alone, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Do, uh, we not, do we not have a question for Dan this, this, this week? Unfortunately not, no. Actually, no, there was... Because, uh, also, I've... <laughs> The forum which I got questions from, I've been banned from until April. Why? <laughs> uh, because I told some bitch off for being a bitch. There was an argument going on about the, in light of the school shooting, inevitably on the internet, just to gun control. And um, she decided, because I'm English, I can have absolutely no bearing or idea of how something that's so intrinsically ingrained in a culture to be taken away or he more heavily regulated... Um, how, how I couldn't possibly empathise or understand that. So, I, but to which I just completely shot down and said, to say that would be the, uh, me saying to you, well, you're probably you're a woman, so you might not understand this. And then the argument went on from there, and I got banned for it. I don't I understand why down. anyone argues on forums. I, I used to argue on forums because it's, um, it's so pointless. You'll never change anyone's opinion on oh, anything. No, but I'm at work and bored. I, if uh, I've got nothing to do, I'll sit on the internet briefly. Um, I'll never go on the forum at home. <laughs> uh, well, Phil did actually post on Facebook earlier, does anyone have any subjects? And someone wrote cheese. cheese. So, yeah. uh, does anyone have any cheese-related things? It's like disgusting. Really? Really? It's disgusting. Your, what about, what, what your favourite? Early <laughs> triangles. That's your favourite cheese. On the uh, crackers at Minanzos. <laughs> 1987? Can I remember that time? Yeah. That's no, it. Right, that's bad. <laughs> Statement. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Oh, okay. You know what? We had a cheese board uh, over the Christmas holidays. Ah, oh, cheese board, yeah. With a variety of cheeses. Would that be middle class? That would be very middle class. Really? Is a cheese board? That would be. Class? Yes! Well, we had a cheese board, and, uh, and one of the cheeses was delicious. It was uh, cheese with cranberry and white chocolate in it. And you would think, oh, really, that sounds horrible, it's delicious. That doesn't say middle class to you. Well, when you put it like that, but, but, you, know, uh, but, you know... When you describe what it is, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Stu, it's hard, it's, hard to, uh, it's hard to take anything you say about middle class seriously because you're, you know, vehemently anti-middle class. Despite doing some things middle class-like... I do no things middle class. Like. Shops in a middle class shop. I don't shop in like, a middle class why, shop. Why are you shops do? It's gonna say that Sainsbury's is a middle class shop. It's not a middle class shop. Firstly, <laughs> point the first. It's the second closest supermarket, and there's not much difference. Probably an extra fucking hundred feet. Plus you I've got the option. The absolute closest Morrison's, which is a sticky dump. I went in it today, and it stunk a sweat. But it's so, working class. But it's all working I fill up <laughs> at, at if I fill up at BP or Sainsbury's, I get points. Points I've used today, and there is virtually probably a penny difference on most things, if even that. <laughs> Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's is cheaper class. than fucking Tesco and ASDA on some things. It's it's, it's not middle class. No, it used to be middle class. Uh, no, it's not middle, middle class. class. Yeah. Max, yeah, Max, it's Max, is middle class. Max, 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 Max and Spence is a bit middle class, I think. It's, it's definitely, very definitely, definitely middle class. It's middle class at least. Is that where you do your food shopping? We get some of our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Sainsbury's is the most middle class of the of, of Tesco's as the Morrison's. Sainsbury's no. and definitely is more middle class than all of those. No. Than Asda. Definitely. I'd say it is no the same as Tesco. Bollocks. It is no the same as Tesco. Tesco's is the bottom rung. No, that no it's Asda. not. No. Asda's the scummiest. Yeah, you know, what? Awesome. Morrison's is the fucking scummiest. You know, no, you know, Asda's next. Tesco's are, are Tesco's literally ev Sainsbury's. Tesco is literally everywhere now. I don't I, Which would sort of imply that it's no. Well, well, it, no, 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 no. It, well, that's another way of saying would be that it's a huge money maker, and therefore it's actually. Well, so it's the two smart. biggest in this country, uh, um, parallel with each other, Asda and Tesco are the two biggest supermarkets. Yeah. They go head to head in everything they do. Asda probably targets doing being slightly cheaper, whereas Tesco probably uh, targets Quality. doing a little bit better for its home brands. But largely, the vast majority of things are the exact same price. Except so maybe their own brand shit. Sainsbury's is still, still 
the more middle, middle class of them all. No, it used it to is. be. That's your perception of it. It's the most middle class of those four supermarkets. That's your perception of it. Which is the most middle class to you then? Out of what? Of those four. Tesco's, Asda, Sainsbury's and Morrison's. No. Which is the most middle class now? No. Um, Tesco or Sainsbury's. It's Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's is the most middle class of those four. It is. It is. This is like arguing on forums, but in person, you know. Yeah. But, you know, Stu's the... the, (laughs) I was just thinking this. If suddenly Stu became a millionaire, he'd still think of himself as working class, even though he wouldn't be. He'd be one of the elite. I would still be working class. You wouldn't, wouldn't, because you wouldn't live like working class. You wouldn't. I you know, would. I'd, no, I'd, I'd w- still penny pinch. Yeah, you wouldn't it, live in Bolton. No, you would. I can see Stuart still going to Sainsbury's. And, uh, It'd buy the uh, the keg of coffee because per cup it's cheaper than getting something. <laughs> <like that. laughs> mm-hmm. This is a person who you, d- does have a good job now. Highly paid. Uh, go to Tesco's, get him beer for the evening. He'll stand there for ten minutes looking at which beer, not not that he actually wants, but it's cheap. Mm-hmm. There's two, the two, um, there's <laughs> Carlin and Carlsberg. Carling, much superior to Carlsberg. However, Carlsberg was a pound cheaper and said, so I don't really want to drink that. It's cheaper though, so I'll have it. Yeah. So for the sake of a if pound... 20 cans of Carlsberg is £13 <clears throat> and 20 cans of Carlin is £14, I'll get 13 Carlsberg. Even though I prefer Carlin. I wish I'd said that I really genuinely enjoyed the cheap beer flavoured drink that we had the beer other day. Beer flavoured water. Beer flavoured water. Yeah. It wasn't even beer flavoured, it was beer like flavoured <laughs> water. <laughs> Basically, y'all wish you were as working class as me. But no. unfortunately, y'all can't. You know, actually, you know what? Um, Do you want a flat cap? Not yet. Well, I'm more working class than you, isn't no, it? No. Yeah, I, you know, I own a flat cap. What, what I say you to that? You're middle class You're pretending. <laughs> right. Um, a lot of rich farmers have flat caps. Mm-hmm. So. Right, th- the right, thing is... Um, yeah, Prince fucking Charles has a flat cap. It's how you wear it. Okay. I find it funny <laughs> that Stu <laughs> thinks he's middle uh, working class yet he's probably not done any kind of labouring in his life. Or proper... What, the labour machines is and... When real did work. you... Begin full time work. What age? What full time? I yeah. think I was probably there's a period between going to university and school. So no full time work. Thirty seven. Probably like seventeen. Full time work. How? Mm-hmm. Uh, because between the period of going to uni and being at school, there's like what eight weeks, nine weeks. Don't count. That is, no, that I agree. When was the first count. time that you started full time employment? May I will do you? Uh. You can stop pointing. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, okay. Um, I don't know. Well, you've just said that weeks don't count. Yeah. So it was in out of the workplace doing uh, in the workplace doing nothing else. Mm-hmm. Uh, Basically, when you give up on life. No, oh, twenty-two. <laughs> Done. On- honestly, actual writing a contract because uh, I was never given a full-time contract 21. at HMV. Twenty-one. Uh, I was never given, even though I worked full-time hours sporadically throughout my time at HMV, I never had a full-time contract, so honestly, legitimately... Last week. 22, yeah. 18, motherfuckers. I'm out this <laughs> Yeah, but it, you could have started working at a bank at 18. Plus, why did so, you yeah, start not, work? That's not working-class work. That's only because you gave up on uni. Yeah, he got out of uni. <laughs> and he's run off. And he's run off. I'm going to uni. Stay away I'm at go. uni. I don't like it. I'm going home. <laughs> now what do I do? Well, we have legitimately lost Stu, so shall we wrap up? Yeah, go on. So, uh, you've learnt a lot today, folks. You've all... Well, uh, learned such a strong word. Yeah, well, you've discovered uh, certain films that have drawn a manly tear to the eye. Manly tears have been shed on this day. You've been convinced that Ridley Scott is a poor director and that Gladiator was... That's not true. Film. That's not true at all. And uh, and we gave you 2012 in review, which, as it turns out, you know, um, <laughs> mediocre at best. <laughs> well, that's, uh, except at the cinema, where it was the good. cinema was good. The cinema was good. And music and music for me was alright, I guess. And you. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I'm Stu, and I'm Dan, <laughs> Phil, Nick. Oh, and follow us on Twitter at Word of Crumb. <laughs>